Hello everybody, I'm Luke Taylor and today I'm going to show you how to build a pedal board for your guitar rig. Now I know what you're thinking. I have a guitar and I have an amp. What do I need a pedal board for? What are all these pedals? What do they do? Why do I need them? Well if you're like me and you love to play one guitar all night and you have a great amp, you just decide to run it cleanly and then you use these pedals like characters to enhance your sound to fulfill the tonal quality that you want throughout the song. Some pedals are drive pedals, dirt pedals, they're much like the dirty channel on your amp. And then some are effects like reverb which make it sound bigger, delay which adds repeats, and modulation effects which give it like a warble or uh, some kind of airplane sound or different really really cool things even tremolo that kind of moves the amp like a like a speaker is rotating so what I want to show today is a very simple way to build a pedal board properly I want to show you the proper order the pedals to put in it to have a kind of all-purpose design that you can take anywhere and use anytime and of course this is not the ultimate like you know you know guitar heaven kind of pedal board thing where it's ten thousand dollars worth of stuff and every lights blinking and there's flashing stuff all over the place it's just a very simple way that you can build a pedal board and be very happy with it and go to a gig and be confident that you got what it takes to fulfill every sound that you want and I'll talk about things that you can add or take away if you want but basically this is the way it goes so without further ado we're gonna start here with this Roadrunner pedal board bag. Now you say board, it's like uh, Luke that's not a board that's a bag. Well that's kind of the idea. Pedal board means you know this. <laughs> so the thing is is you can lay them on the floor if you want but uh, we don't want to do that. This is the whole idea of doing this is to show you the way to do it where you can put everything in here that you want and need and build it the right way and then you can take it to and from a gig. I've been doing this for absolutely for years. Uh, I really believe in this way. I don't like the big uh, wood uh, wood pedal boards or the big like uh, holy boards or something. Not to have anything against any company. It just doesn't work for me. It's too big and I need to be able to have this this size. I mean this space. This is not very big at all. It's basically two feet. Um, this is what I need and I can transport it and uh, it's been a really a really good learning process to learn how to put everything I need inside of one of these and I, I can just trust that I can open it up and it's all good so as we open it up we see it's completely empty and so this is where we start this is this kind of carpet stuff that, that has the velcro system so the very first thing you need to build a proper pedal board is one of these and they're made by a few different companies I like the Roadrunner one uh, it's got a strap it's brand new it's really nice very cheap and so zips up when you're done with it you know it zips up so this is how we're gonna start with this completely empty okay next okay next what you're going to do is you're going to take these cables that provide power for your pedals now this is where you have to really make your decisions because this guy here only has seven nine volts I'm only gonna use five today to show you the proper pedal board order but um, it can get tough if you if you have a lot of things that you want to do I would really like to have about 35 drive pedals overdrives and and distortions and that kind of thing but you can only have seven so we're gonna use five today so I can show you the order and I'll hook those up right now okay so I put four in and I wanted to save the last one to show you it's very simple this goes right in here push it in there and then I like to go left to right and of course when you're gonna decide where you're gonna put these I'll stretch them out to make sure that the rightmost one will go over to the pedal over here on the furthest right so just very simple so if there was any ever a, a problem with the power I can just go to the pedal that I know corresponds with this wire uh, so like that so always go left to right and when you're plugging in your pedals make sure that you do the same with the order with the power so don't get it all messed up okay now the next most important thing we need is pedals we have no pedals we have no sound 
So I want to show you the proper order to do this for any gig. I can do any kind of music in the world doing this, and this is you know a very very simple setup that anyone can be happy with. So we go from the guitar all the way over here. So this is our signal chain. And then the very first pedal that you want to go into would be an overdrive. This is the TC Electronic Cinders. And the thing about an overdrive is you think it's very much like the circuit on your amp. So this is very much like an amp sound. Again, I run my amp perfectly clean. So this whole idea here is to get basically like the drive channel on my amp and it's, it's very light. And this will interact with the other pedals very well. But if I just wanted to go clean and a little dirty, that's all I can do here. So first is overdrive. So let's plug our input in. And then let's go over here to this one. And we'll stick it in the top. There we go. Okay, so first is overdrive. Second is distortion. This is the TC Electronic Grand Magus. So the thing about distortion, again, it's just like the drive channel on your amp, only it's more. It's got basically like, a, it's like, you know, spicy and really spicy. Just think of this as more. So the thing about doing it this way, where you have overdrive into distortion, as the signal's going this way, if this is on, then you turn this guy on, you're going to pump this one into this one. And why I like that that way instead of this way is I like to think of this is like a t-shirt and this is like a button-up shirt. So this is less than this and you kind of want to put a shirt over a shirt, right? You, you know, if you have a t-shirt, like an undershirt, you want to put a long sleeve shirt over it instead of the other way around. Because what this will do is this will kind of tighten, tighten everything up to me in the wrong way if you put it after this. This will kind of beef this up. So you can actually run this a little lighter if you want because this guy will beef this guy up. Now the thing is you can have this on and then you can kind of push this on for just a little bit more gain to be a little shreddy, be a little more loose and thicker. Uh, but I would never put the overdrive after this. So that's that. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get our little six inch Hosa cable, you can get these in a pack. And we're going to continue the chain here. We're going to put that into this. Oh, he's already on. And that's how easy that is. Okay, so then we're gonna go over here to the second one. We'll stick it in the back. Okay, so third in our proper pedal order is the TC Electronic Blood Moon. This is a phaser. Now this could be a flanger. This could be any kind of modulation effect. But basically the idea is that you go drive into modulation. This is the proper way to do it because if you if you drive the modulation it sounds better than if you modulate the drive. If that makes sense. So this guy over here it doesn't sound very good. Now the weird thing about that is if you had a wah pedal, you would put it over here. Uh, I don't need a wah pedal. And the thing about this is if you really like, say like Van Halen, he did like Unchained, uh, that's a really good use of that kind of the phaser. Uh, Paul Gilbert uses, uh, I mean sorry, the Unchained is a very good use of the flanger. Paul Gilbert uh, is very, very well known for using his phaser on, on his uh, amazing amazing guitar playing. If you listen to the album like Fuzz Universe or, or any of his solo records, you can hear that incredible sound. And the thing is, is this will thicken up the sound a lot and it will get this really warm kind of swirling thing. But this is really good too because it's not just about running it this way as far as like, let's just push everything in here. You can use this this way, you can use this on, on your clean sounds and uh, also, I, I think this is a good time to say about this. I like to set up a pedal board too where I can change the knobs. So some guys might want to have all the sound come from their amp and have, you know, like a four channel amp that has all this stuff on it and use the reverb. 
I don't want to do that. I want to run the amp perfectly clean and then do everything with my pedals. So say I have one sound with this and it's like this and then I have another one, I know that quickly I can go do that. I like doing that. You know, say if I, I know like this sounds like this and then I want to do that for a solo. You know, I've been able to do that wherever I'm playing where I can go down, reach down, touch the knobs and change them if I want to. So overdrive, distortion, phaser, or any kind of color color effect. That's the thing too, is it's like this colors this colors the sound. Say it's like a hat or gloves or a belt. You know, you want to put on your clothes before you put on some kind of accessory. So let's get our six inch cable, stick it in here. Stick this one in here. And let's go third. Okay, right here. Stick it in the back. Okay, so next pedal, next pedal we want is a delay. This is the TC Electronic Echo Brain. This is an analog delay, which means it's really warm and uh, you can do some crazy effects with it. But this is really, really warm and this has like that dot, the dot, the dot, the dot. It has that kind of warm decay. Uh, a digital delay would replicate everything perfectly. So your sound would be like, da, 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 da. But uh, an analog delay has a warm kind of trail to it. And I really like this in this kind of setting for solos. It adds like this nice extra quality to it. And uh, if you want, like, the thing about using the analog delay, I've used one for years uh, on my other board, the, the board that I use all the time. I have a digital delay which which uh, uh, kind of emulates an analog warmth, but I use a digital delay because I have the delay time programmed. But the fun thing about doing this, I used to have a uh, Deluxe Memory Man. It was just so fun to be able to to twist the knobs and get it just right, and then you can do that that crazy analog delay trick. But the thing about having this is, um, I don't know, it just sounds special. It adds this it adds this kind of warmth, adds this roughness. It's really, really musical. Uh, to me, it's more musical than an, uh, digital delay. So I prefer analog delay when I can. And if I'm using a digital delay, it has to have a basically an analog emulation to have that warmth to it, which is great for solos. So this is fourth. Stick that there. Stick this here. Okay, and last but not least, probably the most important effect, reverb. Now, every amp, even a cheap one, has reverb in it. This is an amazing amp that has a real spring reverb tank in the back. I don't use that. I use a reverb pedal. And why I use a reverb pedal is because there's some times where I want to apply more or less, and I can't reach in the back of the amp. And uh, I don't actually don't want to have that kind of like on the app all the time. I want to be able to turn it off and on. Now there are uh, amps that have like a like a, a foot switchable reverb. So so kind of like um, kind of like the, you know these those switches. They'll have um, switches for their channels and for the reverb. Uh, my Mesa doesn't, and that's okay. It's a class A single-ended amp. It's it's just the most beautiful sounding thing, so I'm fine with that. I always use a reverb pedal. So the thing about this one, this one has different types of reverb. I'm going to keep it on spring because that's the most like the Mesa and it's the most like the kind of reverb they like. Now obviously you're thinking, hey, just use the reverb on your amp and kick this out and put something else in there. Well, I, I don't think you need to do that. The thing about this is I have a lot of ability here and a lot of diversity. Now, thinking about what we can do differently, I mean, if you're not into a phaser, you want a flanger, put that there, obviously. If you're not into any of that and you want a tremolo and you use a wah, that's fine too. Um, basically, you can kind of edit at this point where you get this kind of order. You can edit to think, well, hey, I only need the overdrive. I don't need distortion. That's too much. Okay, you take that out, move this over, and you can put a wah pedal here. I always put a wah pedal on the floor, just because, um, I don't know, I can, I, can, uh, I can be relied on having it right next to that. If I have to, though, I can put it right here. Um, tremolo, something like that. I like to put it after the drive, 
So I like to put it right here. Octave pedal. Uh, fuzz pedal would go after that because, you know, if this is a t-shirt and this is a button-up shirt, a fuzz pedal would be like a fur coat. And uh, I think you got a layer correctly. So that's the order. Let's plug this guy in. And now, what we need, oh, we need to plug it in. There we go. Now what we need to do is we need to get a cable and go from here into the amp. And then we would be ready to go. And I would say at this point too, I will stop this video and then I'll reload and I'll show you how to Velcro uh, one of these guys and how to get it all nice and clean. Okay. Okay, so here we have our cinders on the ground and I'm gonna show you how to Velcro it properly because this is a Velcro system. This bag, and like many others, comes with this Velcro system. So it's just a strip of Velcro, and then you're gonna cut it properly to shape. So, the thing about this is cool, you have, you have these little feet, but you have this area here, and that's kinda how you wanna measure your Velcro. So I just cut it with a pair of scissors. Now, I'm just gonna peel off the back. which is really fun with one hand. There we go. Peel off the back and stick it right here on your pedal. Now the thing about this, once it's on, you got to know that when you stick it down here, it's going to take a little bit to move it. Because you don't want to, you know, things can happen when you're doing that. So if you want to move it, you gotta do that kind of action if you, if you want to put it different ways. I think this is the best way, nice and straight. But put it there, right at the edge. So when you're, you know, if you if you do get a little crazy on stage or something happens, you're wearing big shoes and you kick it, it'll be okay. That's the whole point. And the thing about this is, when they're snug in here, safe, you shut the bag, put it on your shoulder, take it to the next gig. Everything works out. You open it up, all your knobs are the same. Everything works out. So I'm gonna do that with the whole thing, and then we'll make it all clean and beautiful. Okay, as you can see now, I've put them all on here. They're all Velcroed. They're not going anywhere. And what I did with the six inch cables was I just put the output here and looped it under and looped it over into the input. And I put all the all the input, uh, the power cables in a line here so that's nice and clean. You can kind of see, you can kind of press them down like that. So everything's really clean. So that when you go up to, to play, you just have to worry about this right here and touch these and these kind of have a soft switch on them so you don't have to mash them. So now that we have that going into the guitar, now to the amp, we can show you how everything sounds. All right, now so we're all wired up, we're all ready to go. I got my Ian Champion guitar here with Wolf Tone Legend pickups. Got the Mesa Lone Star Special. So now I'm going to show you how this works. Here's the clean tone. I'll hold it, turn it off first. There we go. Here's the clean tone on the uh, bridge pickup. So that's what I like. Beautiful like that. Let's kick on the reverb. Turn that off to show you the other stuff. Kind of get that out of way. So this would be the cinders. This is the overdrive. As you 
you can tell right now it's a little quieter, so what we want to do is find unity gain. Where the volume is the same on the pedal as it is on the amp. It's almost there. It's right there. So the, if I'm doing a song, say I'm doing a song or something. Say we want it a little, let's just do a little lighter. Take that drive down a little bit. Okay, that's a little more amp like. See, that's just slightly broken up. So I could get that sound on my amp. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. So there we go. <laughs> That's a really nice sound. Switch to the neck here. That's really light, really beautiful. Back to clean. It's just barely there. It's just really light and you can play a little stronger if you want. We'll make it. We'll make it like that. And then what we'll do is we'll turn the knob down on the guitar. So that's almost like having back to clean again, you know. So this is full volume on the guitar and the bridge pickup with the clean amp. And I'm going to turn the volume down. Hit the overdrive. See the same. It's pretty much the same. So if you want to run your overdrive hotter, you can do that. Let's sneak it up. Or if you have, you know, uh, like this, like a two volume, two pickup thing, you can leave the one pickup quieter. Like the bridge pickup quieter. For that one passage. And you hit the full volume on the neck. Want that solo? Hit a little blood move. See, I think that's too loud. So let's find, let's go over here. Let's get that uh, rate all the way down. Feedback a little bit. Depth like that. That's a big effect. So this is going to be more distortion than this, obviously. Bring it up to unity gain. So this is more, you know... if your amp was completely maxed out you know and some some amps have more gain than other ones but again the idea of a true distortion is that's like your amp is totally frizzy and fried and just really hot <laughs> Both 
them together. <laughs> Is that this would be basically be you know verse uh, nice you know nice little lighter things. This is kind of the big chorus, and this is kind of you know the really really rock, and then you can do both for solo. Really crazy. diversity so let's do repeats like that time put the mix it that and the way I always test a delay just just do a you know pick scrape like that delay time so you can put it really light too okay so there. So that's just gonna add a little bit to like a like a passage if I'm going like you know. drive into it, you're going to be distorting this, so you're going to hear it. But it's all good. So it can take away a little bit of the clarity, but that's kind of the point of what I'm saying, of doing everything in front here and doing it this way. You really get a beautiful sound out.
was a nice little demo of this kind of system and the proper way to build a pedal board. So thank you very, very much for watching and I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Please, please like this video and share it. And, uh, you know, down in the comments below, let me know what you think and what kind of videos you'd like to see. Thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day.